ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Graham Hancock. Hello. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you all so much for coming out this evening. It feels like I'm speaking at Burning Man or something like that, which I have done. Uh, it's great to be here. I have so many people to thank. First of all, yourselves for being here this evening. I really appreciate that. And I'm very privileged to have Dr. Danny Hillman Natawijaja here with us. Danny is the lead excavator of Gunung Padang, where work has been stopped since October 2014, most unfortunately. And Danny will join me on the stage to answer questions when we get through this quite large presentation. So let's get started. The question is, why is there a 20,000 year old pyramid in Indonesia? And why does it matter? Well, we'll get into all of why it matters, but here's the pyramid. And for a very long time, it was thought to be just a natural hill with an interesting megalithic site on top of it. By the way, am I audible to everybody here? Yeah! Okay. And that megalithic site was known to archaeology since the early 1900s, since about 1915, as a matter of fact. It's an interesting site. The construction material is called columnar basalt. Columnar basalt forms naturally into blocky forms. Uh, the Giant's Causeway in Ireland is a, a natural product of columnar basalt, but columnar basalt can also be used as a building material. And here at Gunung Padang, it was used as a building material. And this site on the upper terraces was thought to be about two and a half thousand years old until Dr. Danny Hillman took a look at it. Now Danny is a geologist. As a matter of fact, he's Indonesia's leading geologist in the study of earthquakes, a very important field in this country. But Danny also has a passionate interest in ancient history and in the past. And when he made his first visit to Gunung Padang, he felt suspicious about that so-called natural hill underneath the megalithic site and he wanted to have a look at it he's a very enterprising fellow and danny put together a integrated multidisciplinary team using all the latest technology that's available to geologists to take a look inside that mound and see what was going on there was it a natural hill or was the whole thing perhaps man-made and I'm, I'm showing you these pictures because you can see the extent that they went to they did ground penetrating radar seismic tomography electrical resistivity they did some core drilling which was very interesting you put a, a drill down deep into the earth and you bring up a core of material and these core drills were bringing up worked stone and organic material that could be dated Because according to the archaeological story, uh, the, our ancestors 20,000 years ago in the last ice age are supposed to have been nothing more than primitive hunter-gatherers and incapable of large-scale constructions. The remote sensing also revealed a large regular cavity in the heart of Gunung Padang. Right from the start, there was a lot of opposition from archaeologists to the work that Danny and his team were doing. This opposition is largely territorial. Archaeologists feel that they are the ones who are empowered with the investigation of the past, and they don't like it when geologists get involved. Uh, and there was a lot of opposition to the project, and it was delayed for a long time. In 2013, I made my first visit there, uh, and that visit was in the company also of Dr. Robert Schock. He's the professor of geology at Boston University. And Robert Schock is uh, well known for his redating of the Great Sphinx of Giza. 
based upon its erosion patterns. He believes that the Great Sphinx of Giza is more than 12,000 years old. So he was an excellent person to bring to this site, professional geologist, and Robert took a look at all of the material and he absolutely agrees. This is a man-made structure. We are looking at a pyramid here that's been built up over 20,000 years and all we see at the top is just the latest phase of that construction. As I say, there were obstacles and the investigation was being slowed down by the archaeologists. But then Danny brought the former president of Indonesia, uh, President uh, Yudhoyono, uh, to the site in December 2013 and he showed him the same evidence that he showed us. And President Yudhoyono could not understand why archaeologists didn't want this site excavated. And he told Danny, you go ahead and excavate the site.